Rise. Are we having a? We're okay. We'll, uh, yes, the Honourable Member for uh, Peterborough Quarto will proceed and we'll go to Mr. Um, the Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni after. Thank you. As always, it is, is an honour to rise in the House and speak on behalf of my community of Peterborough Kawartha. Madam Speaker, the helpers need help. Three, two, one, go. That is why we are here today. And I think it would be a real miss if I didn't start off this speech uh, by addressing the horrible tragedy that happened yesterday in Manitoba that involved first responders and health care providers, which is what we are here to talk about with this bill. There was a horrific crash and 15 people are gone and the first responders who, who answered that call are forever transformed because of what they saw. And that is the work of a first responder and health care worker. Their eyes cannot unsee the tragedies that most of us will only ever see in movies. Thank you to everyone who arrived at the scene and served in such an unbelievable time of chaos and tragedy. This entire house is thinking of you, our thoughts are with you, and everyone impacted by that tragedy and that community. Madam Speaker, I worked in the media for almost 13 years and I was often uh, on the scene first of, of horrific crashes with first responders and I can tell you what they manage is very hard to describe. PTS or post-traumatic stress and PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder is a very real consequence to this job. Answering a call when the victim is the same age as your partner or a child causes extensive mental distress. Many would say that it is part of the job and that is what you sign up for. But the reality is as life has gotten harder for people, as addictions and mental disorders have increased and there's not as many facilities or treatment or recovery centers to go to, the incidence of violence against our protectors is increasing, which is another layer that is too much to handle. Workplace violence is a rising problem in healthcare settings across Canada. Healthcare workers have a fourfold higher rate of workplace violence than any other profession. And most workplace violence goes unreported due to a culture of acceptance. This was from a report that was done in 2019 through our health committee, and those recommendations have been put forth to the government, but yet we have not seen any action. And today, we have something here on the floor of the House of Commons that will give action and help to our helpers. It would be pretty difficult to debate the strong correlation to the increase in violence to first responders and healthcare workers and the decrease in recruitment and retention of these jobs. We have a shortage of healthcare workers in a time when we have a healthcare crisis. Recruitment and retention concerns are reported in all provinces. By approving this bill, by passing this bill, we will send a clear message that the government and Canadians value their work. And we need and want you. Their work saves lives and their safety matters. The member from Caribou, Prince George, who put this bill forward, is a fierce advocate and fighter for mental health and equity, and this bill speaks to that from a criminal code perspective. Bill C-321 seeks to amend the criminal code by making assaults against healthcare professionals and first responders an aggravating circumstance for the purpose of sentencing. I'm going to read the specific wording into the record. When a court imposes a sentence for an offence, referred to in paragraph 264-1, subsection 1A, or any sections 266 to 269, it shall consider as an aggravating circumstance the fact that the victim of the offence was at the time of commission of the offence a healthcare professional or a first responder engaged in the performance of their duty. Now, Madam Speaker, I think most of us in this House, myself included, have a personal connection to first responders and healthcare workers. I have many in my family who serve in this industry and have told me story after story of horrific incidences. There's also a video that I would strongly encourage people to watch online. Uh, I know my, the member, my colleague, has it shared, as well as uh, my chief in, in my community, Randy Mello, has shared on his Twitter. I strongly encourage people to write or to, to watch this video to understand this. 
Now, Paul Hills is a paramedic who came to my office in Ottawa to talk to me about this bill. Paul Hills has been a paramedic for 24 years, and he serves in Saskatoon. And when he came to my office and talked to me, I think what left me most shocked was that he told me he now has to wear a bulletproof vest to work. These are the people that show up in the time of extreme chaos, the time when our lives are on the line and now their lives are on their line. They are supposed to be the calm, and how are they supposed to self-regulate? How are they supposed to be calm when their own life is in danger? They don't know when they show up now if they're going to be stabbed, punched, kicked. They don't know. And we have a duty and responsibility in this House to pass legislation that not only says you matter, but actually puts it into law to protect them. And, you know, Paul Hills is a, is a fierce advocate, and his mental health has, has been transformed, and he speaks really publicly about it, and I think that's really courageous of him. And he, wore, he was wearing these, these socks at the time when he came to my office, and I said, well, who's on your socks, you know, after we had this, this conversation? He said, oh, it's Fred Rogers. And I said, oh my gosh, Fred Rogers is my, my favorite. He said, yeah, it's my favorite saying, anything mentionable is manageable. That's my favorite saying. And that's the reality of what we're dealing with. We are dealing with the most volatile culture and society that we have ever had, probably in my history. We have nowhere for people with mental health and addictions to go. And you know who's become the person to deal with that at the, at the forefront? Our healthcare professionals, our paramedics, our firefighters, our police officers, our correctional officers. I worked in, during my campaign, when I ran to be a member of parliament, and I worked in an area of town um, where a lot of people who were struggling with homelessness were outside of my office. And it was nothing out of the normal for first responders to be called five, six times in a day to a scene, to have 911 called, to be berated, yelled at, attacked, screamed at. Is that what they signed up for? To be abused? or to save lives. This bill does something that we can be so proud of in this House. When in a time when victims are being failed in this country, in a time when victims' families are being failed in this country, because you see, Madam Speaker, this isn't just about the health care professional. This isn't just about the first responders. It's about their families. Because when they go home, and they are carrying this burden, those, their children is impacted, their wives, their partners, their spouses, their moms, their dads. They are not the best partner. They are not the best parent. They are, that is deeply impacting every interaction that happens. Our society is a spider web. And if the people who are here to protect us aren't protected, what will happen to our society? I want to read to you what Paul wrote to me last night, Paul Hills, the paramedic from Saskatoon, when he knew I was speaking today. It's proven that prosecutors and courts don't have a proper mechanism to hold assailants or perpetrators accountable because it's seen as part of our job to deal with or lessen the situation because of mental health addictions. But what about the, med the medic's mental health? I have to take that black eye home. I may not be able to use my wrist or hand again after the tendon was torn from being kicked. I have to worry about the threats that gang members made to me and my family when I am not allowed anonymity, and they can find out my name just by calling the office and look me up or follow me home in my small city. We have been told by prosecutors that they won't pursue charges because they won't stick or it won't make a difference if you were a paramedic. The reality is, Madam Speaker, this is a no-brainer no -brainer bill. In a time when victims and victims failing families are being failed in this country, this House can send a message today and follow up with concrete action that protects our protectors. The helpers need help. And do you know how hard it is for them to ask for help? They did the hard part. Now let's do the rest of our part. This is our responsibility, so let's all vote in favour of Bill C. Three, two, one, let's go. Let's get this bill passed. Resuming debate to the Honourable Member for Courtney Albany. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and, and like my colleague before.